Good morning, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, manifest your spirit in this place. Father, we're here to magnify you. We're here, oh Heavenly Father, to praise you. Lord, we are here to worship you. So fill us with your spirit and let the words of our mouths, the meditation of our heart, be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, thy strength and thy redeemer. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Let us continue praying. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We thank you for bringing us together in your house today. We thank you that you have prayer answering God. We thank you for what you've done for us in the past and what you're about to do for us today. Lord, we pray that you will come into this place and hear our prayers and let our cries come unto you. As I stand in the in the gate for my brothers and my sisters, Lord, I pray that you will forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. If there's anything in me that will impede or delay the, the hearing and answering of these prayers, Lord, please remove it. I pray, dear Lord, that, that you will come down now and visit each one of us. Visit those who are not here but need you. In a world saturated with trauma, a place where, where we have nowhere to turn for healing or for hope. We live in a place that's filled with, with pain and suffering. We live in a wounded world. We live in a world that is broken. We're filled with broken people. Live in a world where the blind are leaving the are leading the blind and, and the maim are assisting the, the wounded. Lord, please. We need you, Lord. We need you, Father. Come now and hear our prayers and let our cries come unto you. Oh Lord, we hear that there's a bomb in Gilead that makes the wounded whole heard that there's a bomb in Gilead that makes the sin sick soul. Oh Lord, come down and take care of our wounded and take care of our sin sick souls. We hear that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Lord, there are the believed amongst us. Wipe their weeping eyes. Someone has told us that there's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein where sinners that plunge beneath are made clean of their guilty stain. Oh Lord, dip all of us in the blood this morning. Cleanse us and make us whole. We hear that the, the burdens are lifted as Calvary. Lord, we we come to the cross this morning. Lift our burdens, dear Lord. As our faces differ, so do our needs. You know what we need. Sometimes even our prayers are not true to our real needs. Oh Lord, let your Holy Spirit bring before the throne of mercy that which we need and do for us that which only you can do. Father, we pray for our country. In this time of these election seasons, Lord, we pray that you will come and touch the hearts of the people. Let your power manifest itself. Bring peace to the land. Prevent violence, Lord. And help people to, to vote their conscience so that your will may be done. Pray, dear Lord, for our city. 
our city that is still reeling from violence and, and from crimes of many kinds and from, from the truancy of our children and our young people. Oh, Lord, heal Memphis. Come now, Lord, and, and take over this, this community. We pray for our church. Father, we pray that our church may indeed be true to her witness, that we may be the light on the hill that folks will come to for the truth and for strength and for leadership. We pray that our ministries may truly be bring glory to your name. All of our programs, oh Lord, as we prepare for this block party next week, bring the people that you need to come to be served and then Lord to be to be ministered to Father we pray that you will heal our diseased bodies heal our bruised and battered emotions heal our, our, our torn and tattered relationship heal our sin sick souls heal us individually heal us collectively and heal us Lord as a community we can't end this prayer without calling a few names. There may be some that we don't even have. Father, bless Herbert Brown Sr. May he also receive the same blessing that we are praying for. We pray for Sister Ida C. and her son, Taurus. Oh, Lord, touch them where they are. And may your healing bomb be made available to them. Oh Lord, we pray, we pray for, for those that are bereaved in our midst. We are praying for, for the Dunn and Springfield families. We're praying for the Hicks and Dabney families. We're praying for those who are providing care for those who need care. Sister Alice Connolly, give her the strength she needs so she will, she will minister to your people. Bless each one of us. We know that none of us come before you that go without a blessing. May none of us leave here without that special blessing that we stand in need of. Oh, Father, we pray that when others see us, may they also be a witness that we have had, we have had an encounter with you today. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Lord, as we continue to call upon your name, Father, we just want to take a few moments to say thank you, Father. We thank you for allowing us to see another day, Father, but not just any day. We thank you for letting us see another Sabbath day. Lord, we know that some did not see today, so we just want to give you all the honor, praise, and glory, Lord. We want to thank you. Thank you for allowing us to assemble here this morning, Father, to lift up your holy name. Lord, we want to send a special, special thank you, Father, to you for watching over and blessing and keeping the 60,000 pathfinders, dear Lord, who descended upon Gillette, Wyoming this week, Father. We want to thank you so much for keeping your hand on them, Father, through the storms, the wind, the rain, the mud, the trials, dear Lord, but praise God, there were triumphs, Father. We want to thank you, Lord, for the leaders, dear Lord, who took it upon themselves to, to gather together hundreds of pathfinders from their various cities. Um, we thank you for the, for the GC leadership, Lord. We thank you for the conference leadership. We thank you for the pastors. We thank you for the youth leaders. We thank you for the church members who took time out of their schedules to make sure that those young people were able to all come together there in that great encampment and lift up your holy name, Father, despite the trials that came their way, Lord. And we ask a special blessing upon each and every one of them that they will have safe traveling mercies home as they descend and go back to various parts of the world, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Father. You have been such a great God to us, and we thank you for everything that you have done for us, and we thank you for everything that you're going to continue to do for us. Is our prayer in Jesus' name, amen. 
before we either read or recite, depending on how good your memory is, our fourth commandment, I want to just share a quick testimony, because of course we know our fourth commandment um, talks about us remembering the Sabbath day. It is our obligation, and I take it as a personal responsibility of mine, to make sure that I share with others about the Sabbath, because the Sabbath is a gift. It's a blessing, and it's not just our gift. It's not just our blessing, but God gave the Sabbath to the entire world. And so I like to take it upon myself to make sure that I share that with others. Something very interesting happened this past week at work. As of course, my coworkers know that I observe the Sabbath because I tell them on a regular basis. Um, but instead of, I've noticed that the conversation has shifted from just telling me to have a great weekend, enjoy your weekend, to have a happy Sabbath, enjoy the Sabbath. And one of my coworkers told me that yesterday, and I, I stopped because, you know, you're not used to hearing, you know, happy Sabbath at work. And I was like, thank you so much. And then she went on to say, I'm going to be, you know, kind of busy this weekend, but I'm going to stop and make sure that I take some time to rest and reflect on the Lord. That's all God is asking us to do is make sure that we share his word with others so that so many, so many can be saved. So at this time, if you would please stand with me and turn in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. And again, we, you can either read it, you can recite it, depending on how good your memory is. All right. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is in thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Enjoy the Sabbath day. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We're going to do a song that I want you to join in with. A song says, all of my life, I've never known you to fail. You remain the same, and wonderful is your name. Amen. So a song says, the hook of the song says, for the rest of my life, I'll serve him. How many of you plan on serving him for the rest of your life? I didn't see the choir. How, how, that your hands go up back here. You plan on serving them for the rest of your life. Amen. Come on, sing along with the choir.
Well, the song says, Wonderful is your name. All right. Well, this is your turn to sing. Our hymn is hymn 524. It should be on the screen as well. Hymn 524. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. And these, we got to do something about all these delayed amens. <laughs> Amen. I mean, are y'all here this morning? <laughs> I said, it is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Amen. Now that sounds like church. The old saints would run around the church just on the title. Amen. Amen. All right. Hymn 524, you should have this, should be on the screen as well. And, um. We're going to try to do something here. Let's see. Let me look see what I got here first. Uh -huh. I think we can pull it off, though. So this is what we're going to do. First stanza, everybody. Second stanza, ladies only. Third stanza, we're all joined in together on the course, of course. Third stanza, the men will show you how this is supposed to be sung. Y'all with me, men? Man, that's how I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then the fourth stanza, we'll all sing together. Everybody got it? Oh, let's stand and sing. Everyone standing? All, all together. Tis so sweet to trust in just to Just to rest upon his spot, just to know the same. Come on, ring it out. Jesus, Jesus, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, pray. Oh, All right, ladies, are you ready? Yes. Ladies, are you ready? Yes. All right, sing, ladies. All together, the chorus. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust. All right, let's hear from the men. Are you, are you ready, men? Are you really ready, men? All right, let's sing, man. Let's show these ladies how this, how this verse is supposed to be sung. Let's go. Yes, it's sweet to trust in Jesus. Just from sin and self to cease. Just from Jesus simply take life and rest and joy. Everybody. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust it. I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, all for grace. Everyone on the last stanza. I'm so glad I learned to trust him. Precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with How I trust him, how I prove him more and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for 
your grace to trust him more. Amen. You may be seated. Today we have a special guest that's going to come now and to rent to us a selection. He's all the way from California. Amen. Amen. He's all the way from California. Come on, Longview. Let's give a warm Memphis welcome to Mr. Martin Scott. As he's coming to St. Paul's. Come on, y'all. We can do better than that. Good morning, everyone.
Amen. Come on, say amen for California. Amen. Brother Stout, it's good to have you here just worshiping with us today. That's what we all want, isn't it? We want the Lord to just take our hands. Listen, we have for almost three years planned a remodeling program for our church. And at the end of this month, the last Sabbath of this month, we plan to have a business meeting where we'll talk in more detail about the plan. We should have a picture that you can see of how the sanctuary would be remodeled. You don't see it completely. Basically what is going to happen is that the sanctuary stage is going to come all the way out here. Two of these, two of these pews will not be here any longer. And the stage will have steps where you can walk up on it. And there will be a handicap ramp in the back where you can get on the, the, the stage as well. All the instruments will be on the stage. It's kind of hard to see that in that picture, but we plan to have a picture on the walls or on the easel for you to be able to see it here pretty soon. Um, hopefully by this coming Sabbath or the following Sabbath. <clears throat> but the stage will be much larger. We're going to repath the pews. Gonna, there's some pews that need some help. Amen. But you know what? All the things, and one other thing that I think that we really got to do is work on our air condition. Come on and say amen. We got to work on our air condition. We have to work on our kitchen. There's some things we're going to do outside as, as far as the front part of our church. We have some, a number of people on our ad hoc committee. If you're here on the ad hoc committee, the, the, the committee that basically helps make these different decisions and then brings it to you, if you're on the remodeling committee, would you stand? I know oh, Dr. Folsom is on there, and who else is on there? Elder Turner, well, Florine, Florine's on there. These are the people, as you see them standing, you talk to them about what are we doing with our remodeling, okay? How are we going about it? What are, gonna, what are some of the changes these people understand the different changes. They could bring them to you, and you can talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Not one of these people will bite you. Amen. They are really nice people. So we want you to, to go and talk to them. The, there's going to be a lot of changes that we're going to make in our building. And, and, you know, these changes are not free. They cost some money. Amen. So we will also be coming to you as, and saying, okay, this is how much this is going to cost. Now, in your home, in your home, how many of you all have a television in your home? Okay. All right. How many people have a computer in their home? How many people have some type of furniture in your home? Okay. So... So if you have these things in your home, those are nice, and you probably had to pay for them, okay? Maybe somebody was nice and they just gave them to you, but you probably had to pay for them. But that's your home, right? Do you like the stuff in your home? I said, do you like the stuff in your home? All right. Okay, is it, is it quality stuff? All right, so if that's your home, God's house should be better than your home. If your home is better than God's house, then I'm afraid your house might be an idol. God's house should be the best that there could be. I know I'm telling this. I haven't even started preaching yet. Okay? But God's house should be the best that it could be. And so I'm encouraging you to start praying and asking God to give you some financial blessings. Won't he do it? I'm asking you to pray and ask God to give you a spirit of sacrifice. And when we come to our business meeting on the last Sabbath of this month, we're going to talk in detail and in cost how much things are going to cost. You can talk to those people that just stood, uh, uh, Elder Turner, Florine Jones, um, Dr. Folsom. Noah, Noah, Noah but Boyd is also on our committee. No boys also on our committee, myself, and, and ask us, well, what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? 
we'll be more than happy to share with you. May God bless you as we continue our worship service today. Amen. Amen. We need to ask God for a financial breakthrough. Amen. Amen. And, and, and how, it, how it comes, we'll, I'm sure the treasury will receive it. <laughs> Amen. I want to thank again, Brother, Brother Scott. Amen. We're, we're so used to hearing all those all those high voice Donna McClurkin singers. It was kind of it was kind of refreshing to hear a real bass. <laughs> Amen. I thought that was I thought that was Melvin Franklin from the Temptations, but y'all y'all I forgot y'all y'all too saved. Y'all y'all don't know nothing about it. <laughs> y'all don't y'all don't know the bass put the bass on the Temptations. Y'all too saved. Anyway. <laughs> Somebody said, I know. <laughs> All right, but we're going to leave that alone. Let's, let's get back spiritual and hold it again. Let's get back spiritual. But I um, want well, to thank you again. I really want well, to thank you again. So anytime you're in town, and I also understand that he's, he's kin to Minnie and, and Luce. I think he's a nephew or something. All right, yeah. So I, when I came in, I said, you must be one of them Tompkins, because all them Tompkins are musical. Amen. <laughs> so let's give him another hearty Amen. Thank you so much. Psalm says, holy is the Lord. You are holy God. Come on, sing along with us.
he worthy of all our praise? And you just think about all the things that he's done in your life. You ought to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, okay. Um, you all don't seem like y'all know how to praise him that much today. Um, but if, if I'm the only one to praise him, I'm going to praise him all by myself. Because he's worthy of all my praise. I don't have to have a song to praise him. I can praise him in the car, wherever I am. Can you praise him? You need to praise the Lord. He's worthy of all our praises. I want to say I'm thankful for great elders that can come and preach the word. And I want to thank Elder Donna Owens for standing up last Sabbath and preaching the word of God. Um, I was visiting in Jackson, uh, Tennessee, where we had to ordain a uh, deacon there in the the pastor there is not ordained, and so he asked if an ordained elder could come and do that. And so that's where I was on, on that past Sabbath. And I missed you all tremendously. I missed the choir. Amen. I missed each person here in the church. Uh, it's something about just worshiping together as a family that makes a difference in our lives. And I'm thankful for each one of you. I hope that you enjoy worshiping here, too. It's, it's a privilege to come to Longview. Amen. This morning, let's bow our heads as we seek the Lord in prayer. Father, which art in heaven, speak through your word again. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Would you turn in your Bibles to the book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 1. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. This is going to be our theme text today. And I'm going to stay in it for most of the time. Every now and then I might go a little bit because the word of God, it should be here little, there little. Uh, that's why sometimes I don't have you to stand because I, you would have to stand all the time because I'm giving you a whole lot of text to give. I'm not just going to give you one text and close the Bible, all right? I'm going to give you several Bible texts because I want you to understand that that's the book that we use when we share God's Word. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. Do you have it? And at that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince which stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as there never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who was found written in the book. I'm extremely excited when I read Daniel. Daniel is one of my heroes of the Bible. I like his job. He was always able to stay clean. I, I, like, I like, he probably got really paid because he was a top government official. Daniel was a prophet of God. Somebody says dare to be a Daniel. And dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose firm. Dare to make it known. God has some secrets that he shared with Daniel, and Daniel gave this information to the world. But there were some things that even Daniel didn't understand. There were some things that God said, shut up the book, Daniel, close it up. It's for the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. We must obey God on what we know what we're clear on. There are some things in the Bible that you and I do not understand. Nobody knows it all. Am I right about it? There are some things you have to scratch your head and say, 
I don't really understand that. And that's what happened to Daniel. There are some things that God showed him that he didn't understand. However, if anyone will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. Whether it is of God or whether I speak of myself. That's what Jesus said in John 7, 17. So if you know God's will, do what you know. 2 Corinthians 8, 12. For if there is first a willing mind, it is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what he has not. God says the information that you already have, act on that. Be obedient to what you know. In Revelation 22, verse 14, the Bible says, Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates uh, into the city. It is, it is imperative that we do what we know to do is right. Am I right about it? Prophecy is a gift from the Holy Spirit. And Daniel tells us about a hot date. That's, that's the name of the, the, the sermon today, a hot date. Let me read it again. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince which stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as there never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book. This text is eschatological. Eschatological means something that will happen at the end of time. Something that happens just before the world is destroyed. This text is is talking about something that's going to happen before this world is over. This text is also cataclysmic. Cataclysmic means some kind of event that will happen that may destroy the world. It is a cataclysmic text because this text tells us that there is going to be a time when there's going to be so much trouble, the whole world, the universe, will be affected by this text. The Bible also in this passage lets us know that it's inspirational. The Bible lets us know that even though things are going to go wrong, God is still in charge. It is a hot date. Well, I might need to explain what a date is. Um, it is not. I'm not talking about a sweet, dark brown fruit that looks like a raisin. Do you know what I'm saying? That's a date. That's not the one I'm talking about. I'm not talking about your date of birth. I'm not talking about the day you were born or the month or the year. The date I'm talking about is an appointment where you meet somebody that's hot. Hmm. When is the last time you had a date? Y'all remember having dates? Y'all don't, don't, don't do that no more? And when's the last time? When's the last time you had a hot date? Let me hold it, goes. A hot date. Uh, when you have a date, there's at least three things that you should do. You should, you should prepare for the date. Make sure you take a shower. Help me, Holy Ghost. Make sure you look good. Brush your teeth. All those kind of things. You, you should have your clothes all laid out. Can, is anybody listening to me today? You should prepare for your date. Not only that, if you're going to have a date, you should have a purpose. What you plan to accomplish. I would tell my daughter before she would go on a date, you, you had better know already what you're going to do. Oh, y'all not listening. Y'all not going to talk to me today. You, you, you already better know how far you're going. Don't wait till you get to the date and say, I don't know what I'm going to do. You better know before you go on the date. What is your purpose? What do you plan to do on this date? Then thirdly, you should be punctual. Am I right about it? If you're going to have a date at 7 o'clock, you should be ready a little bit earlier than 7. Listen to this hot date. 
It is found again in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the sons of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as was not since there was a nation, even to the same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that's found written in the book. I want to talk first about all about the preparation of the date. The Bible says at that time Michael shall stand up. Do you see that? Who is this Michael that they're talking about? Let's go to the Bible to see. It's still in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 10. What book did I say, everybody? Daniel chapter 10, <clears throat> verse 10 through 13. Let's go back a few chapters. Daniel, this is the first time Michael is mentioned in the Bible. Daniel chapter 10 Starting with verse 10, suddenly a hand, Daniel, Daniel is praying in chapter 9, and he didn't get the answer to his prayer. But while he was praying, a hand touched him, all right? An angel touched him. Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O oh, Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and straighten upright. For I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking his words to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel. For from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief prince, came to help me. For I had been left alone and there with the king of Persia. The king of Persia is the enemy of God, Satan himself. But Michael came to help this angel. This angel is none other than Gabriel. And for 21 days, Lucifer was so strong, he stopped Gabriel from helping and getting an understanding of this vision for 21 days. And then the Bible says, Michael came in and he helped me. Look at verse, verse 13. But I tell you, what is not noted in the scriptures of truth, no one upholds me against these except Michael, your what? <clears throat> Do you all see it? I'm in verse 13. 10, 13? But I tell you what is noted in the scriptures of truth. No one upholds me against thee except who? Michael, your prince. Notice how it keeps saying Michael is the prince. First, it says he's the chief prince. And now he says he's your prince. In other words, Michael speaks for you. Michael represents you. Michael is the one that's able to help you even when the, uh, the prince of Persia tries to stop you. I would like to tell you today that Michael is none other than Jesus Christ himself. He is the archangel. He is the one that's able to help us in difficult situations. The Bible says that Michael will stand up that means he's done his work. That means the pre-advent judgment is over. He has investigated every name of every person that wants to be saved, and now he's made a decision of who's going to heaven and who's not going to heaven. When Michael stands up, all cases have been decided. When Michael stands up for the first time in salvific history, it's once saved, always saved. It's once lost, always lost. When Michael stands up, no other prayer can be forgiven because everybody has made their final decision. How do you know that, Pastor Horton? Turned in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 11. The Bible says, he who is unjust, let him be unjust, steal. You see that? He who is filthy, let him be filthy, steal. 
He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. It is a continual lifestyle. The people that make it through these times when Michael stands up, they live before God without sin. Those people that are not right with God will never turn right with God. They're lost and they will always be lost. The saved will always be saved. That's amazing. That's when Jesus comes out of the most holy place. Because the day of atonement is over. All cases have been decided. Everybody is clear. The Holy Ghost has gone upon the earth and sealed all those that have decided to serve God. And there will be no turning back. Either you're on the side of God or you're on the side of Satan. When Michael stands up, it is that Jesus has completed his work. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a hot date. I don't know exactly when it's going to happen. But when Jesus stands up and he says, everything is finished. Everybody's case is decided. That is a date that I hope you and I are on the right side of, of Jesus. I hope that we've made our calling and election sure. That is something that we need to prepare for. That's why we're here today, because we want to prepare for that date. Am I right about it? We want to make sure our lives are covered with the righteousness of Christ. It is not how hard you work at it. It is your relationship with Jesus that makes the difference. Am I right about it? It's, it's your cover. What, what it really means when he says those that are righteous are righteous still mean that they've gotten so close to Jesus that they don't want to turn around no more. They don't want to give up anymore. And even if they have fallen, he has covered them with his righteousness. Hallelujah. You don't have to be afraid of the Day of Atonement. You need to know Jesus. If you know Jesus, there is no fear. Am I right about it? When you know, you know, we, we often do things that we, we act like we're not afraid. You, how many of you all have gotten on a plane and flown somewhere before? All right. Did you actually get the resume of the pilot? You don't, you don't know who he is, do you? You probably don't know his name, his cousin, or nobody, all right? But you got in that plane, didn't you? you, you we paid the money, got in the seat, so we put our seatbelt on, and we prayed. Am I right about it? Especially if there's some turbulence going on. Nobody here that got on a plane when there was turbulence going on got up and said, I'm sorry, flight attendant, please open the door and let me get out. Nobody did that. I don't care how, you know what? Sometimes in the church of God, there's going to be some turbulence. Don't you let nobody Turn you around. I don't care if they don't say happy Sabbath to you. I don't care if they don't like you. If they talk about your mama, I'm on my way to the Canaan land. If you don't go, don't hinder me. Oh, I know I'm telling the truth today. The thing is, is that those that follow Jesus, one day, one day Jesus will say, he that is righteous will be righteous eternally. That's going to be a hot day. You got to prepare for that day. The text says, and there shall be a time of trouble such as was not since there was a nation. There is no historical precedent, Dr. Folsom. No historical precedent for this time of trouble. We can't look back and say, oh, well, we had a big time of trouble in World War II. Oh, in, 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 in the uh, uh, Depression, that was a time of trouble. It's going to be worse than that. You, you may have somebody that can talk about how difficult it was when they were growing up or even in slavery. But the time of trouble 
that he's talking about in this text is the worst time of trouble that has ever come upon the world. There's no time of trouble that will be as bad. Listen, I don't care who is the president of the United States. There's still going to be a time of trouble. Let me, let me say, I think you should vote. Are you listening to me today? I think you should vote. But regardless of who you vote for, God is still in charge. Am I right about it? God is still in charge. And he says, there's going to be a time of trouble. Ellen White dipped her pen in the ink of heaven and she wrote in Great Controversy, page 614, there are forces now ready and only waiting the divine permission to spread desolation everywhere. You thought it's bad now in Memphis. It's going to get worse. You thought it's bad now in, in different countries. It's going to get worse. Page 615, she says, when the irre irrevocable decision of the sanctuary has been pronounced and the destiny of the world has been forever fixed, the inhabitants of the earth will know it not. People will go on their regular duties just like it was in the day of Noah. Noah preached, and when he went in the ark, people didn't even pay attention to it. There are people that are so indifferent right now, they don't care about what's going to happen. They, they think it's just another sci-fi movie. But what Daniel is saying, there's going to be a time of trouble. Will you turn with me to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, and verse 7? Jeremiah. Chapter 30, <clears throat> verse 7. Alas, for the day is great. There, so that there is none like it. And it is the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. Here, Jeremiah says that we're going to go through a trouble, trouble time just as bad as Jacob had it when he was fighting with the angel. Do you remember that story? He was wrestling with the angel, and he was upset because he thought that he was going to lose. But the trouble that we have will be greater than that trouble. You have not seen trouble like this. You have never seen trouble. I used to pray when I would study this sermon a long time ago as a little kid. I, I'd pray, Lord, let me go to sleep. Just take me out. I don't want to, I don't have to go through that trouble. Because in this trouble, I believe each person that's alive will have to meet Satan face to face. In this trouble, it will be so in your face, you will not be able to hide behind the pew. Right now, you can say, oh, no, I'm just going to watch it on TV. I'm just <laughs> right now, you can say, oh, well, I'll just I'll catch the rerun of the church program. But on those times, it's going to be in your face. And you're going to have to, it's going to be a time of trouble. Never, catch this, never have we come this close to this date and never have we been so indifferent. I'm going to say that again. Never have we come so close to this date of the time of trouble and never have we been so indifferent. Oh, the whole world talks about it. The ecologist talks about Global warming, because they realize that we're getting ready for a time of trouble. The economist talks about inflation and, and, and all types of problems that will happen with our monies because they realize this world can't keep on going the way it's going. Look at the political system of the lies that people tell, of all the things that people do. We are in a, a, a little time of trouble already, but we're not in the major one. But we're leading towards a time of trouble. The immorality that goes on in our world today with people that are killing one another without impunity, with people lying and stealing and robbing one another, with people deciding 
oh, I'm not a man anymore. I'm a woman. No, I'm not a woman. I'm a man. We have a crazy world we live in today, and we're moving towards the time of trouble. I know I'm telling the truth. The trouble actually does not come from the fear of someone hurting you. You know how this trouble is worst? You know how this trouble is magnified? The trouble is a mental struggle where every child of God will ask, are there sins repented of? Are there still some sins that they've held on to? And like God, when he was on the cross, we will be able to say, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You will be in darkness and mentally you'll wonder and you'll ponder, is, am I really right with God? It will be a, a mental struggle. That is the greatest time of trouble. It will require those that can go through hunger, weariness, and delay. The question will be, will I obey God rather than man? The test will be the Sabbath. See, most people, most Christians, keep nine commandments. Am I right about it? But the fourth commandment separates the men from the boys. Amen. The fourth commandment, there will be a charge given that if you keep the seventh day Sabbath, you will be killed. If you don't keep the first day Sunday, but if you keep the first day Sabbath, you will be killed. And there will be people that are watching you. There's neighbors in your neighborhood right now. They, they think you go to a funeral every Saturday morning. <laughs> you, 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 have, you have not been like, like Elder, Elder Roberts. They, they don't know what you're doing on Sabbath, but, but they will find out. Because they are watching you. Are y'all listening to me today? It will be a test. Am I going to be obedient to God? Will I be obedient to God? Because God expects us to keep all ten commandments. Amen, Pastor Horton. You can't just keep nine and think it's okay. Amen. There is a purpose for this hot date. God is dividing the sheep from the goats. Right now, you don't know who's sitting beside you. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't know you. I don't know you. I, 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 it might be a mass murderer right next to you. You, you don't know who they are. You know, you, people are very, very, they're very, uh, they, they can impersonate a Christian. Especially in church. People, people can act like one thing in church. But when, when a, a command is given, if you don't keep the Sabbath, if you keep the Sabbath holy, then you will be killed. Then you will find out those who serve God and those who serve him not. It is a purpose. It is a purpose. I know, I know, I know, I know. It's like, ah, oh, that can't happen in this country uh, where we have religious freedom. They're already taking away women's freedom to choose. I know I'm telling the truth. That people will take away any right that they can take away. And the Bible lets us know <clears throat> there is coming a time when you will either have the seal of God in your life or you'll have a mark of the beast. Come to Wednesday night prayer meeting. We'll be talking about that. The whole point that I want you to understand is that if you're not serving God right now, if like Daniel, you have not purposed in your heart to serve God, you will not make it through the time of trouble. If you can't be right with God, if you can't live right for God right now, then when a great time of trouble comes, you will not make it. And so my job is to get your purpose right. Amen. There's going to be a hot date 
It's coming pretty soon. I don't know when the date's going to be, but I do know it's coming, and you ought to get ready for it. Not only ought you to prepare, but you ought to have a purpose. It says, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to be obedient to his commands. The Bible says in this passage, and at that time, this is my favorite part, and at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book. Do you know God has a contact list? I, I don't know people's phone numbers anymore. I'll just say, call Sister Harold. And my phone will call Sister Harold because she's in my contact list. I'll, call, I'll say, call, call Brother Woolborn. And it'll just call. I don't remember your number, Brother Woolborn, because you're in my contact list. Are y'all listening to me today? God has a contact list. He knows the people that have been talking to him, and he says, I've written them down in a book. Hallelujah. The Bible lets me know that God has a list of everybody's name that want to serve him. Now, there are ways that you can get taken out of God's book. Every now and then, I will delete somebody's name. Are y'all listening to me today? Every now and then, that name is not, I can't be talking to that person no more. And I have to delete. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? God is so merciful that he keeps your names on the book. But if you decide not to follow him, it comes a time when Michael stands up that he's deleted the names. He is not going to write them in again. See, when God, you start out with your name in the Lamb's book of life. Everybody, everybody's got their name in the Lamb's book of life. I don't care what country they're from. I don't care what religion they have. They keep the, God expects to save everybody. But if he ever takes your name out, it doesn't go back in again. That'll mess up the books of heaven. He, he, once he takes it out, it's out forever. Once it's, it's holy, it's holy forever. It's unrighteous, it's unrighteous forever. And when he stands up, his contact list is complete. The Bible says, and at that time, shall Michael stand up. It says, and that time, Thy people shall be delivered. Hallelujah. I don't care how bad the trouble is. God says, I'm going to deliver my people. Catch this. God does not stop the trouble around the Christian. But he stops the trouble inside the Christian. I'm going to say that again. God does not stop the trouble around the Christian. He stops the trouble inside the Christian. When you, don't have, when you have a joy inside of you, when you have a hope inside of you, when you have a, a, a love of God inside of you, it really doesn't matter what people are doing all around you, how bad the trouble is, because God has stopped the trouble it's, that's why Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. He, he, didn't say, he didn't say there wouldn't be any trouble. He just said, don't let your heart be troubled. He went on to say to the disciples, he said, in this world, you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. That's what I like about him. He's not going to stop the, he's not going to steal the storm on the water, he'll steal a storm in your heart. He's so much God. He does his best work in storms, in troubles. He does his best work. He wants to show the devil and unfallen worlds that he's got somebody that will be obedient to him even when there's all sorts of troubles all around. Listen, I don't know what trouble you're going through today, but God may not get rid of your trouble. He just may give you a heart that even when you have the trouble, you can have peace. Amen. God will deliver. 
Didn't he deliver, didn't he deliver Daniel? Didn't he deliver the three Hebrew boys? Didn't he deliver Noah? If he delivered, why not everybody? If our name is on the Lamb's book of life, then God says, I will deliver. But not only will I deliver, but I will deliver at the right time. I like that. See, Jesus says in this passage, he's very clear that, that, that his delivery, his delivery is punctual. <laughs> it's punctual. He's not only, he not only has a preparation, it's not only a purpose, but his delivery is punctual. He's going to deliver at the right time. Hallelujah. God is going to return to this earth. And he's going to come on time. I don't know what time he's going to come. But I know he's coming. It may be at morning when the day is awakening. It may be at midday. It may be at twilight. It may be perchance in the darkness of midnight. When Jesus will come in the fullness of his glory and receive from the world his own. Songwriter says, oh Lord Jesus, how long, how long till we shout that glad song? Christ returneth, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. One day he's coming back again. I remember hearing the sermon many years ago as a little boy in Oklahoma City and I realized I wasn't ready for Jesus to come. He has taken for me a long time, but he is punctual at the right time. When he's ready, he's going to come. We don't know the time. All we have to do is be ye also ready. My old elder in the church from Waco would say, Our God shall come and shall not keep silent. A fire shall devour before him. And it shall be very tempestuous around about him. He shall call to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together to me, those who've made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Psalms chapter 50, verse 3 and 5. God is punctual, He is never late. Hallelujah. When he comes, he already knows the date. He can't tell you. If he would tell you, you'd act a fool all the way up until that day. Am I, am I right about it? He can't. The Adventist church thought we knew the date. We were wrong. We were disappointed. It's okay to be wrong. But we had to study, and we realized that no man knows the day nor the hour. But it will be a hot day. The Bible says it'll be a, a, a cloud that comes from the east. It'll be a small cloud that comes and it gets closer and closer to the earth. Because now Jesus, after he left the earth, he only travels in clouds. And he gets closer to the earth. It will get brighter and brighter. And then his voice, the Michael's voice, the, the voice of the archangel will be so melodious and so strong that those that are righteous and that are dead will hear his voice and come forth. And when they get out of the graves, they'll say, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Those that are righteous, that are alive, will be caught up to meet him in the air. That is a hot day. Am I right about it? That is a hot day. A date that you don't want to miss. The good news is that God will not wait to deliver you just in the latter days. He can deliver you right now. <laughs> he, he as, as my friend would say, right now. He, he can deliver you in this moment. He's a delivering God. He's so much God that if you go to, in fact, before you call, he will answer. Amen. I kind of get excited about that because I realize the God I serve wants me to be ready for the hot date. 
It's going to be a hot day. Now, you got to prepare for it. You got to have a purpose. You got to be punctual. You can't be getting ready. You got to be ready. When you wake up this morning, you ought to get ready. When you go to bed at night, because you don't know if that's going to be your last night, <clears throat> you got to be ready. When you're driving in the car on, on, on Highway 40, you better be ready. Am I right about it? When you're on the streets of Memphis or wherever you live, you better be ready. Look, it's not enough for you to have your Smith & Wesson. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have it, but that's not enough. It's, it's not enough for you to have a Cavalier vest. It's not enough for you to have security guards all around you. If you don't know Jesus, you are not ready. I wonder if there's anybody that wants to be ready when Jesus comes. If you want to be ready, will you stand with me? You want to be ready when Jesus comes. You want to be ready. He's coming back again. And it's going to be a hot day. You got to be ready for that day. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what else you need to go. Maybe you have a doctor's appointment somewhere. Or maybe you're going to meet with some friend of yours. Maybe there's a romantic date that you want to get on. But one date you don't want to miss. You want to prepare for it. You want to have a purpose. And you want to be punctual. No turning back. Oh yes, no turning back. No turning back. Will you decide to follow Jesus? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. Somebody here today wants to get to baptized. To say, I want to follow Jesus all the way. You want to come down front today and say, Pastor, because of my love for God, I want to follow him with my whole heart. I want to make sure that I'm ready for his second coming. If that's your decision today, maybe you need to be rebaptized. Maybe you need to start over with God. Maybe you're watching online today. You can connect with us. But wherever you are, don't miss the hot date. Don't miss the hot date. Is there anybody, is there one today who wants to follow Jesus all the way and be baptized? No turning. Let's do it one more time. No turning back. I've decided. presence of the Lord today. Father, we're children in heaven, thank you for those that are standing and somebody's watching right now online and they're renewing their covenant, their promise with you. Somebody in this church, Lord, Somebody who may be watching is still in the valley of decision. There's so many people that just play church. Just go through the motions. Help us to know there's going to come a time when we will have to make a clear decision whose side we're on. Help us to decide now Before you stand up and say, he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. Before you say, he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. Oh God, help us to make a decision now to follow Jesus all the way. And we'll give you the praise and the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.